Hello guys, welcome to the third video of Jenkins as cron management server. I know it's quite late for the third video and I would just say like better late than never. So yeah, um, so um, for the first video we have covered the overview of how Jenkins can be used as a cron management server and why did we choose to use that as a cron management server instead of just using the cron tab functionality. Uh, in the second video, we have gone through the setup and installation stuff uh, of Jenkins as a system. So Jenkins is basically a CI system, um, continuous integration system. We are just using it, its functionality for a cron system. Uh, this is like we experimented and it was a huge success for us. Um, it may or may not be a successful project for your scenario, but if if you're you're using a cron uh the linux cron plain vanilla cron uh, i would recommend to give a thought on if you can use jenkins as that system so yeah let's jump on uh, this video will walk you through what parameters are to be configured how how we can use a project configuration here and get notified if a build fails and how to retry it automatically and all that stuff so yeah, this is our production setup and uh, uh, just go straight to a new item, type in some name, choose freestyle project, click OK. You will land to some project configuration like this. I am in edit mode so that it's simple to show all the stuff. Yeah. So uh, you enter some project name, some description. I recommend having a brief description with a documentation link and the owner's name so that you can catch hold of the owner whenever something goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll not walk you through through all the parameters uh, in this Jenkins, but uh, yeah, most important of them will be covered shortly. Um, if you have a scenario in Jenkins, which you could not find in the default setup, I'm pretty sure that uh, there are plugins out there in the Jenkins community, which can help you fix uh, your scenario. I'm pretty sure of that. It's an open source community. Most of that is, uh, and, and you should like leverage that community and also contribute back to the community. That would be my suggestion. So without wasting much time, let's jump in and uh, explore this first parameter, discard old builds. Uh, so this project one build, uh, one configuration is one project, one item, right? And it is used to run one particular script only. So uh, if it is in daily schedule or an hourly schedule, it will generate too much of the logs. And of course, we don't want months old log to be kept on the server, server and uh, occupying some space. Of course, the infrastructure team does not want that. So yeah, you can discard the old builds using the strategy of log rotation. You can either say, uh, uh, just keep the builds of 10 days and uh, before that any build, you can delete it. So next time when it runs, it deletes the older builds or maximum number of builds to keep. Just keep 10 builds as simple as that this parameter is don't let uh, user manually retrigger this job okay so why is why this should be kept unchecked see if you are running running a schedule right if it fails there is a capability in jenkins to retry it it will retry but again if it fails and you figure out there is some bug in your script you just go fix it and you want to trigger it manually again so that manual triggering is possible through uh, through a button here. Just like, so let's say this is a job. Uh, okay, we are not in the correct place. Here, here. So this is a job, just click it and it will rerun. As simple as that. Okay, so yeah. That's why it should be unchecked. Uh, yeah, this is next important parameter. The build is parameterized. So if you're writing a script, you might have many scenarios where you want a parameter to be passed to your, uh, to your build. Normally a string parameter is passed or a date time is passed. So yeah, 
so we are taking text parameter as the date parameter here and that will be passed to our script something like come on come on come on come on yeah here that's the parameter and this command will run and execute how do we handle the parameter inside the script is our problem i mean the script's problem not the jenkins configuration problem right jenkins will only pass the parameter and uh, and you can also have a condition where a null parameter can be passed default value is null so a null parameter can be passed the beauty of jenkins is all the things are like a button click away your help is there and you just pop out the help and it's very self explanatory so yes uh in the last video i have uh, gone through this particular concept wherein your slave connections have labels and labels can be linked to a project where that has to be run so yeah this is this is the label expression where my project will be run on a particular slave machine so resources of slave will be consumed so you can go back to the last video and uh, get the reference of that particular statement so yes build trigger section this is an interesting section wherein uh, you define the scenario how your build should be triggered uh, either your build should be triggered periodically where uh, in the legacy systems in the cron we give like at this time the build has to be triggered so this is a schedule it will trigger every 5 minutes a standard cron scenario and it will speak out this also the another scenario can be i have a project upstream project if that is successful then trigger my uh, my particular build so i'll give you an upstream project yeah after this is finished whatever config i am editing that build should be triggered so yeah there can be this possible scenario also uh okay next section built environment so yeah this is an interesting section actually um this is the most important parameter which i like about the build if it is stuck so what happens with the normal developers is we specifically with the cron, cron scripts is we write cron, cron scripts and we just generally don't test it too much because it is an ad hoc requirement coming in and we have to just write it and deliver it quickly so um and we know normally on the live data how much time it takes let's say it takes 30 minutes to run so what we can do is time out this script after 30 minutes or let's say save a site 45 minutes so we can config this as a time out strategy of absolute with time out minutes as 45 so after 45 minutes this build will be uh, aborted and you will get a mail saying that uh this particular build this particular process is ended so that you are sure my script is taking more time than than the usual thing there may be cause of more data or a database connection or something else memory leak or something else so there are a couple of more strategies uh you can read about these strategies just by help help thing it's very easy uh set build name by default the build name is set as number a auto increment number but we can we can have the in this particular example what we have done is we have date time in the log so that we know exactly when this build failed at what hour so the expression for that is here build log expert start and end string is given so that the date time which is printed on the build name is in the middle and you might have wondering how how i get this right as simple as that oh not this yeah this is the documentation for that and you can use any particular logic you want or regex you want uh okay so yeah the build section how do you want to build it right so in our case we have executed a shell 
with the command and the parameter. If I want no parameter, I can just skip it, right? Uh, there are more steps to it also. Uh, but if you are using this as a cron management system, I'll recommend having execute shell normally. But if you want to use it as a CS system, invoke ant is something you could uh, you could leverage on. And based on a scenario, if you want to update the build name, you can update also using some macros and all that. So yeah, we will not go into that much details. Now the last section, the post built actions. So it's it's very obvious if a build failed, a cron management system should mail me, right? Saying that your build has been failed. So we say that send email for every unstable build on this email address. And this can be space separated multiple email addresses also. Okay. And the next is retry built after failure. Yeah, this is also a very good section saying that I don't have to worry about it. There might be some network failures and all that stuff. So just retry built after the failure and have a fixed delay or a progressive delay and do it for three times. Now fixed delay is like after 10 seconds. Progressive is something like uh, increment of 10 seconds having maximum of 40, 10. So if first will fail after 10 seconds, next will fail after 20, third will fail after 40. Uh, yeah, 30 or 40, whatever it is. Let's go with a fixed delay, right? Yeah. And there are a couple of more uh, post built actions uh, as so if you want some other project to build after this project, you can add build other projects also after this is successful, of course. So you can chain them as such and just hit save and you're good to go. Um, if you have any questions, please leave some comments, suggestions, questions. I'll try to answer them. Uh, yeah, all the best.